Hello, I'm Steve Tattersall with Antares Tile in Boulder, Colorado. Today I'm going to be installing the shower line PVC drain. Um, my floor joists are running parallel to the drain. They're TGIs, which is not consequential here. Um, my last drain, the TGIs were running in the opposite direction. They were perpendicular to the drain. I would not have been able to use this drain because of the thickness of the plastic of the casting. I had to use a Proline drain. If this is the case, go look at my other YouTube video for the Proline TGI installation. Um, so I've I'm, the drain is going to sit right on a joist, so I'm going to have to put some blocking in between joists to keep the floor solid. I can't just cut a hole and drop this drain down in there. And because of the depth of the drain, I'm going to have to notch out that blocking where the drain sits. So I'm going to go ahead and cut my hole. The width of this drain here is uh, two and three quarter inches. And you can't cut too much larger than that because there's holes in the drain where you attach it to the subfloor. So you want to cut it pretty tight, but you're still going to want a little bit of wiggle room. So I'm going to go ahead and cut the hole for the down drain. I'm going to cut my slot, another hole in the floor so I can get to my existing plumbing, so I can get my blocking in. So I have my blocking in place. I've got a few of them across here. Um, these two on the outside of the drain don't need to be shimmed down for the drain body. Um, because of the, t the slope of the drain gets deeper and deeper towards the center, this one, yes, I did have to notch out. Um, but the other two I didn't. Um, this is all together. I have all of my plumbing in place. I'm going to close up the floor and put my backer around the exterior walls and get ready for slope and backer board on the floor. So I've pre-cut my slope panels. They butt up against the drain. They do not go underneath. I have screwed my drain down to the subfloor. If you feel along, you will find the dimples where your screws go. And I've removed the clamping collar and set it aside for all the rest of the waterproofing. I'm also going to cut um, quarter inch backer board to go into the rest of the floor. Uh, this floor is getting radiant heat, but I don't like to run the detour right up to this. It's too hard to waterproof. So I'll give myself a couple of three inches that'll go around the outside and on this outside corner. Um, <clears throat> all of this goes down with a quarter by quarter inch notched trowel and thin set. I'm going to set these panels and set the hardy backer on my subfloor and then I'll go into waterproofing. So I've set my panels, I've set a little bit of my backer board, I'll put my radiant floor, my Dietra heat to this. I'm ready for waterproofing now. And the first step is to pull off the green outer cover, leave the cover on the inside so that your drain itself is protected. Um, with the liquid pr waterproofing kit, you get two outside corners and two inside corners like this and you will get a roll of the fiber tape you'll crease it and put it in the walls you will run it down your seams of your slope you will have another piece that comes across to here there will be another piece that I will put along here so that all of your seams and all of your corners and all of your edges have been waterproofed with the fiber tape and then waterproofing on top of that. Um, and it takes two coats. I like using the Mape Aqua Defense better than I like using the Red Guard. Um, I can waterproof all of this and throw a fan on it. It'll be dry in about an hour and a half. I can get my second coat on and I'm ready for tile. So you can typically do the whole rig, all of this part, in a day and you're ready for all of your floor tile. I want to point out also that this drain has locator pins, these two little needles that stick up. There's two on either side and they locate that clamping bar when you go to put it back on because you'd never know where the screw holes line up for when you screw the clamping bar down. So when you're putting this 
fiber mesh over the top here you want to be sure to push those down so that they'll protrude and um, you'll be able to find where your clamping bar goes and you'll probably cut yourself on them a couple of times also another thing is that this aqua defense if you leave a big lump or a puddle someplace um, it dries pretty hard and you're going to have a hard time getting it off of there so be conscientious when you're going around and make sure that you've got all of the high spots and everything taken care of so my waterproofing is finished and dry I'm going to replace the clamping collar I'm getting ready for tile I'm going to put a bead of modified urethane sealant this is go board sealant for wall board um, Noble makes a product also I'm going to put a bead on this room side edge of the clamping collar for my capillary break. I have my little needles here for my locators which go in this inset hole here. I'm going to put a bead of the modified urethane sealant on this outside. Screw my capillary or screw my clamping collar down with these screws and um, then I'll get to these corner pieces. And I've cut the drain extension down to fit. There's little tabs on the side that line up with the clamping collar. I'll put a generous amount of the modified urethane sealant underneath. As well, I'm going to run my capillary brake up the wall so that any moisture that gets down into this pan will not be able to travel into the room. All that water is going to stop. It'll go under the clamping bar here into the drain. It won't get past the drain and into the room. I'll do the same thing on the other side. And last but not least um, are these collars that go over the top of the clamping bar and the uh, drain extension they just fit right over the top and slide down they're adjustable for the height of your tile I like to leave them proud and as I'm setting my title tile I'll go ahead and I'll push them down so they are just a hair below the tile so that the water can can flow over the top of it um, and that's pretty much done until we get all the tiles set grouted and we'll cut open the inside of the drain and fit the um, the drain cover in place so my tiling is all finished and I've removed the protective cover over the drain I've cut my drain cover down to length and these spacers fit onto these notches. They don't go on every one. I've got five of them that came with this kit with a six foot, with a five foot drain. Um, and they slip on. The advantage here is that they also slide. So if for some reason you're not fitting absolutely straight, you can still slide these spacers to make them fit. So I typically put one spacer on, drop it in the drain, see what level it is. It comes with these extra little pieces that snap into place and then they go on so that you can lift the drain as high as you need to to be flush to the floor. Um, these are PVC. 
I suggest that if you are using these spacers that you go ahead and use the glue and, and glue them in place. What happens is the first time the customer goes and pops the drain out, some of these come with the drain, some of them stay behind, these things fall off, they go down the drain, and it can be a real problem. So figure out the height that you need for your drain. Go ahead and put the spacers on and put these into place. They're, they're a real bear to get on. I mean, they're an excellent fit. Typically, I get them close and, and use something flat to push them down into place. Again, I'm Steve Tattersall with Antares Tile in Boulder, Colorado. If you would like one of these drains, please feel free to give me a call. My phone number is on my website, AntaresTile.com. Um, if you have any installation questions, I'm happy to answer them. I have installation videos in most all applications. Um, give me a call. I'd be happy to work with you on your new curbless linear drain shower project. Thanks.